Good afternoon. This is Helen recording homework for magical storytelling. The title of this story is called Maban Story. Once, a long time ago, when this ancient world was still very new, there was a mother. Her name was Madrone, which means great mother, for she was beautiful and strong and her love shone from her as light from a great sun. And Madrone had a son whose name was Maban, which means great sun. Maban glistened and glimmered with his mother's love, and within him his own heart also shone with love in return. Those who looked upon him were dazzled by his great youth and energy. But when he was still just an infant, a tragedy occurred. Maban had not yet slept three, three nights at his mother's side, suckling at her breast and nuzzling into her arms when he was stolen away into the darkness. When Madrone awoke to find her, when Madrone awoke and found her beloved son gone, and no one could tell her who had stolen him away, she mourned and wept, and her tears swelled and flowed like a great ocean, for a mother's sorrow, too, can be as great as her love. Many years passed without sight, without sight or sound of Maban, and all this time Madrone continued to grieve and hope. Then one day a king arrived, seeking to speak to Maban of her son. The king's name was Arthur, and he came with a retinue of skin, skillful and courageous knights following behind him. King Arthur and his knights had been set an impossible task, to hunt the huge and terrible boar called Torch Twith. This boar was so strong and so fast and so tough that no hunter in the world could track him down and kill him, save for the greatest huntsman of all. No one knew who this huntsman was, but rumor in the land whispered Maban's name, the great son who had once shone with such energy even when just a babe. People said that if Maban still lived and could be found, Surely he could kill the boar. And so King Arthur had come to Madrone to ask her if she knew where her son might be found. The question pierced her heart and made her laugh through her sorrow. Do you think I have not wondered that myself all these long years? And yet, though my sorrow is as great as the deepest ocean and as vast as the darkest expanse of sky on a moonless night... I have never been able to discover where he is, or if he is even still alive. You have come a long way, King Arthur, and I cannot help you. You may as well ask the blackbird where the boy is hidden, she added with a sad, helpless wave of her hand. King Arthur, too determined to give up, went and did just that. He and his knights searched out the blackbird, an old creature who had long guarded the gateway into other realms at the edge of dawn. Blackbird, Arthur called. We're looking for Maban, son of Madrone, who was stolen from his mother's side three nights after his birth. Do you know where he may be hidden? The blackbird peered down at Arthur and his knights with quick obsidian eyes. I am old, as you well know, he said at last. You see this dusty spot here where I sit? When I was first born, there used to stand here a smith's anvil, the biggest you might ever see, made of the hardest iron. Yet no hammer ever touched this anvil, except when I pecked at it with my beak gently every day. Now nothing is left but, it, but this dust beneath my feet. That, said the blackbird, stirring the dust with his wings, is how old I am. And yet I have never seen or heard of Maban, son of Madrone. But, the blackbird continued, I know of one who is even older than I, and I will take you to him. 
Arthur and his knights thanked the blackbird for his kindness and followed his lead. Soon he led them to the bright stag of the forest, whose old coat glistened as with midday sunlight. Stag, called Arthur. We are looking for Mabon, son of Madrone, who was stolen from his mother's side three nights after his birth. Do you know where he may be hidden? The stag lowered his huge antlered head and gazed at Arthur and his knights with ancient amber eyes. I am old, as you well know, he said at last. You see this massive oak tree beneath which we stand? When I was first born, this oak tree was barely a sapling, sprung up from its acorn, and yet now it is the biggest tree in the forest, thick with years of growth, its heavy limbs stretching wide in all directions, and the prongs of my own antlers number just as many as its branches. That, said the stag, swinging his head with pride, is how old I am, and yet I have never heard of Mabon, son of Madrone. But, the stag continued, I know of one who is older than I am, and I will take you to her. Arthur and his knights thanked the stag for his kindness and followed his lead. He soon led them to the owl, whose rippling moonshine eyes had watched the comings and goings of night for unknown ages and now looked on Arthur with placid kindness. Owl, cried Arthur, we are looking for Mabon, son of Madrone, who was stolen from his mother's side three nights after his birth. Do you know where he is hidden? The owl adjusted her silent wings and turned her haunted, blossomy face towards Arthur and his knights. I am old, as you well know, she said at last. You see this ancient forested valley in which we stand? When I was first born, there stood a forest here even older and more wild than this one, and I watched as the people of the land moved in and cut it to the ground. Yet, as the people slowly abandoned the land for more fertile soil, another forest grew in its place, and that too became wild and strange with age until again the tillers of soil moved through, slashing and ripping at the roots of the earth, and the forest withered and disappeared, and the valley became like an empty bowl beneath the sky. But the lives of people are passing. So easily will they go to war against each other, so quickly will they drain the sacred land dry. And so again human beings left this valley to the gods of wild places. And this is the third ancient forest I have watched grow to wilderness here. That, said Owl, her low eyes shining like deep pools, is how old I am. And yet I have never seen nor heard of Maban, son of Madrone. But, the Owl told Arthur, I know of one who is older than I am, and I will take you to him. Arthur and his knights thanked the owl for her kindness and followed her lead. Soon she led them to the noble eagle, who held his head aloft and flourished a beak and talons so sharp and true they might slice the air itself into two. Eagle, called Arthur, we are looking for Mabon, son of Madrone, who was stolen from his mother's side three nights after his birth. Do you know where he may be hidden? The eagle regally preened a few stray pin feathers into place and blinked at Arthur and his knights with benevolent, piercing eyes. I am old, as you well know, he said at last. I see this tiny, you see this tiny rock I clutch between my talons? When I was first born, there stood here a mighty standing stone, so lofty that it towered above every mountain, and I could sit upon it every night and lift my head to strike my beak against the upper limits of the black sky, and each peck pierced the darkness and became a star. And yet the stars you see now are numerous, beyond counting, and I made every one, and, stand, and the standing stone that thrust up from the earth met wind and rain, the elements of air and water, and together the three joined in a dance that wore the stone away. 
until now all that remains is me is the mere pebble at my feet that said the eagle clacking his beak that had been that had made the stars themselves is how old i am and yet i have never seen nor heard of maban son of madrone by now as you can imagine king arthur was beginning to despair that he would never find maban to help him hunt the wild terrible boar his face was haggard with searching and his eyes were sunken deep from sleepless nights and long journeying to these ever more ancient beings none of whom seemed to be able to help him his knights though loyal and trusting in their king were beginning to tire as well and being a good king to his people and friend to his companions arthur knew he must soon call off the search for their sake if not for his own the eagle, whose keen mind could read the fatigue and stress in Arthur's expression, had sympathy for the weary king. But let me tell you a story, he said to Arthur. This story begins once a long time ago when the earth was new. There was a great famine in the land, and I was still young then and had my fair share of suffering and hunger. One day I had flown afar from my usual hunting spots in search of something to eat, and I spotted far below me in a small pool shaded by nine hazels the quick shimmer of a fish in the water. Without second thought, I dove. I clenched, I clenched into the fish with both feet, sinking my talons deep, determined to catch the thing, for if I didn't, I would surely starve before nightfall. But the fish was blessed with an almost monstrous strength, and it dragged me down, under, down and down, into the spiraling, swirling darkness of the pool. If I had not finally relinquished the thought of my own hunger gnawing within me and released my quarry, I would have drowned. This creature, I learned later, was the ancient salmon of wisdom even older than I, who had lived for ages upon ages in the sacred pool, feeding on the hazelnuts, which fell into the pool from the surrounding grove. Hazelnuts, they say, are food for the gods, and I would be surprised if the wise salmon herself were a, go were a goddess dwelling in that strange and mysterious place. A mere king like myself... A mere king like myself, said the eagle, could never presume to capture a goddess against her will. But let me tell you, Arthur, if the salmon of wisdom still dwells in that pool, I can take you to her. Although all the oldest creatures in the land could not tell you where to find Maban, son of Madrone, surely she will know and she will help. If she cannot, then your quest truly is beyond all hope. And so, with a new hope and fresh energy, Arthur led his knights with the eagle. As their guide far across the land, over gentle green downs, through dark twisting woods, until at last they came to the sacred pool of the hazel grove. Exhausted, King Arthur knelt by the side of the pool. Its surface moved in subtle wavelets where a small stream fed into the ground, weaving and trickling between the roots of the trees. It seemed to Arthur, as he looked upon the water, that there, in the reflection of shading branches, he could see the ancient sparkling eyes of a goddess smiling at him. Then they were gone. In a flash, the silver body of a fish flickered by, and Arthur called out, Salmon of wisdom, we have come a long way to seek your help. We have spoken to the blackbird and the stag and the owl and the eagle, and of all these ancient beings, no one could lead us to what we seek. We are looking for Maban, son of Madrone, who was stolen from his mother's side three nights after his birth. Do you know where he may be hidden? From the depths of the pool there came a lovely, watery voice, barely distinguishable from the bubbling of the stream. And did you ask his mother? Well, yes, Arthur said, but she said she did not know. Sad laughter bubbled from the glimmering darkness. Madrone's sorrow over the loss of her son is as great as an ocean and as obscure, said the salmon. But the ocean is my home, 
and I know the secrets of its depths as I know my own. Every year I return to this pool and follow the stream far into the hills of this country, all the way to the spring in a courtyard of the Castle of Light. And I tell you, Arthur, that for many years now I have heard the weeping and sorrow of one lost and alone when I have come there. Do you think, wise salmon, that this sorrow sound may be of the great sun? I have no doubt, said the salmon firmly, and I will take you to him. You may ride upon my back as I swim, but I can only carry two. So you must go alone, Arthur, so that when you have freed the son from his captivity, you may both ride back together. So King Arthur took leave of his knights, who saw off their king with a mixture of courage and trepidation, and he clambered aboard the long, slippery back of the Salmon of Wisdom. Quick as light glinting over the water, the salmon swam with Arthur astride her, and it seemed the countryside sped along on either side of them with a magical speed so that almost in no time at all they were approaching the place where the stream began its journey, the spring by the great castle of light. Now the castle of light was strangely named, for in fact it was a dark and forbidding place, overgrown with half-rotted and ruined from long neglect. As the salmon of wisdom drew closer to the fortress, Arthur too could hear the weeping sounds coming, echoing from within the walls of the mossy stone walls. Leaping from the salmon's back, he charged into the dim courtyard of the castle and battered the hilt of his sword against the inner door. But the door was old and spongy with rot and gave way before him, and he thrust it open, following the sobbing sounds down, down into the dripping dungeons of the castle. There, at last, he came upon the hunched, weeping figure of a man huddled in a corner. At the noise, the man looked up, and though his eyes were red from crying, his face was radiant and youthful beneath the grimy streaks of tears. "'You are here,' Arthur said, with the command of a king in his tone. "'Are you Maban, the, su the great son of the great mother Madrone?' The young man sniffled and wiped his nose with the back of his hand, straightening up. For sure I am, sir, and I have been locked in this dreadful dungeon for ages upon ages. Well, said Arthur, the doors have rotted and the walls have crumbled, and I have need of a great huntsman to stalk the wild, terrible boar called Torch Twith. And I have come to set you free. Will you come? Of course, Maban said, and followed Arthur swiftly from the back, from the black of the dungeons up into the wane sunlight above. Together they mounted the salmon of wisdom, who looked at the young man with, gent with secret gentleness and did not strive to keep the king and his huntsmen dry in their return journey home. Waters from the stream splashed and danced against their bodies as the salmon leapt and plunged, her glistening body writhing with the joy of dodging rocks and limbs, and soon all the dirt and strife of years in the dark had washed from Maban's face and his whole being seemed to shine strong and healthy again. And this is how he came to his mother, Madrone, bright and gleaming, accompanied by the majesty of Arthur and all his brave knights following behind. And she swept him up in an embrace of gratitude and happiness that was greater than the ocean, greater even than the sunlight and the sun itself. Then she released him with a smile and one last thankful kiss and gestured that he could go with her blessing to help Arthur hunt his ugly boar. For as it turns out, he was indeed the greatest huntsman of all the land, and he made a swift end to the huge boar that had eluded so many before him. Then there was a great feast and celebration afterwards, 
and I assume Madrone and Maban both attended with pleasure, seated honorably at the king's own table. And that is as good a place as any for the story.